Hey everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. Today's video is a little bit different. We have some food prep for you, but I also got my Thermix. So I was very excited to unbox it and share. If you don't want to watch it, just skip the beginning of it. Uh, but I had a bit of a ramble while I was watching myself unbox it and things like that. We crumbed all the Kievs to go in the freezer uh, and we made an apple custard crumble for dessert as well. So that's all in the video today. So take a look. Skip whatever you don't want to watch and I will see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow's video should be the quarter of a cow, I think, because it's arriving. So I will share with you what you get for a quarter of a cow, just in case you're interested. I will see you again tomorrow, guys. Thank you very much for watching. So first thing I got to do today was to unpack my Thermomix that arrived. I was extremely excited. I have had my model for over 10 years now and it was just a really exciting thing to have the opportunity to get a new one. Uh, I have discussed it before but I signed up as a consultant so that I can try and earn it. So I paid for a third of it and then if I can make six sales within my first 60 days then that will pay off the rest of it for me which would be unreal but if not then I will figure it out and money that has been put aside for other things will go towards it. I still think it's a worthwhile investment for me because I use my old one constantly and having the new one with the new solar array means that I can use it for cooking purposes as well. So it opens up a whole new uh, arc of things that I can do that I used to do with it before we moved off grid and haven't been able to do in a long time. So I was just really excited to have the opportunity to try and earn the Thermomix but if I can't earn it then I will pay for it because that's what needs to be done but if you are interested in learning about one or might be interested in upgrading or buying or anything else please drop me a bell because I'm more than happy to give you a hand with that process as well and I will stay on as a consultant regardless because I'm using it in my videos every day so if anyone ever wants to contact me about it then they can and hey we mutual benefit there for someone to buy through me for them to be able to see me use it and constantly and I can help them out but for also benefit for me so we'll see how we go but anyway I got to pull it all out of the box today and the uh, Thermix always comes with accessories so it always comes the unit itself plus you get the bowl and the blade and the lid uh, and you get a simmering basket which you can use to do things like rice in so you're not doing them in the main bowl with the blades uh, you get so some new things now there's a splatter guard because the newer Thermomix goes up to hotter temperatures so I've never been able to do things like caramelized onions or anything in my old Thermomix the TM6 actually goes up to higher temperatures so that you can uh, you can even make toffees and stuff I believe in it so we're going to have to give all that a go but it goes high enough that you can boil water uh, you can use it as a kettle not that that's something that we would use but it is a usability uh, and it can do things like caramelized onions which means that because you're cooking things at that higher heat things will splatter uh, in the old one we used to just like put a plate over the top which is totally not suggested so they now have what's called the splatter guard that sits over the top that allows the steam to get through but it doesn't get let you get splattered and stuff which I think is a great idea uh, one of the other things I noticed straight off the bat is that the measuring cup so that's the little lid that goes in the in the lid the little like cap that goes in the lid to, to seal the hole actually clips into place and that might seem like a really small thing but when you take the lid off the thermix you generally put it upside down on the bench because it's got food on the inside of it and normally you'd have to hold the measuring cap into the lid to place it on the bench because the cap didn't slot in it just sort of just sort of placed there and now that it clips into the lid it means you can put the lid down without having to worry about that measuring cap falling out so you can put it down on the bench lift it back up and all that and it stays in place such a tiny tiny thing but I think that that's a really awesome <laughs> thing <laughs> a bit silly but that really impressed me I was really happy with that so when you buy the Thermix, you also get the Varoma, which is your steaming basket and stuff like that. It's not something I use extensively, uh, but it's nice to have it because if you're boiling something in it anyway, like if you're making a soup or something that you're boiling underneath, you've got all that steam that you can use. So you, if you're already doing something, then you can stick the steaming basket on top and steam other things in the 
basket while you've got stuff going underneath. I probably personally wouldn't use it just to steam something like with water in the bottom. I'd just use my stove top, but it depends. Like if it was the middle of the day and we had heaps of power on the panels and I wanted to steam something rather than using gas, which I pay for, then I could use the excess power off the panels to steam something in the thermix if I wasn't using it for something else, which is probably unlikely because it'll be used in a myriad of ways over that span of time. So anyway, I unboxed it all and put it all on my bench and had a good look at it. I did all the standard st setup stuff. Uh, this The new model has a Wi-Fi connection, which is really neat too, because any updates to the software, so any new functions or any new updates to the software can be done over Wi-Fi. Again, with my old one, you used to have to send it in to get software updates, so you never got the software update until such time as you needed to send it in for another purpose or whatever else. So the fact that this can do it, just whenever it wants is great of course you can have it turned off if you don't want it doing it automatically i have it connected to my wi-fi because we have satellite internet and it's on all the time anyway so i hooked it all up and got my cookie do subscription all set up and had fun with that once it was all going, of course, I had to use it because, you know, that's what you do when you get something new. So I had all those Chicken Kiev minces, the, or the big bowl of Chicken Kiev mints that I hadn't used yet uh, in the fridge ready to go. So I hadn't made my crumbs yet. So the first thing I did was I made my crumb mix. So this is the Skinny Mixes recipe. So it's based on almond crumb. So I put all my almonds and my seasonings, so some onion flakes, some paprika, salt, pepper, things like that, into the bowl and ground up all the almonds and all the seasonings into a crumb like mixture it is a it is a, a a chunkier crumb but because you've got that minced meat it sticks to it well enough that it doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be particularly fine and I quite like that texture to it it's got a definite uh, a definite texture to it that's a little bit like more appealing than just straight breadcrumbs it, it works well for me so obviously you can just use any sort of seasoned breadcrumbs on your Kievs that you want uh, I also used slivered almonds instead of whole almonds, so um, I prefer to use the natural almonds with the skin on them because I think I like the the way it colours and textures the crumbs, but it doesn't really make any difference. My honest to goodness order still hasn't turned up. It says it hit Toowoomba on Friday, but it hasn't turned up to me yet, which isn't unusual. Courier services to me are not superb. So anyway, I mixed up all the crumb mix, playing around with the all the settings, figuring it out because I have such an old Thermomix that mine is a dial and button, not a touchscreen. I have used the TM5 briefly, which had a touchscreen, but I feel like this, uh, the 6 is a massive upgrade to the 5. I feel like the 5 was just a little bit of an upgrade from the 31 to have a touchscreen, a little bit for the sake of having a touchscreen, and I feel like the 6 has really, really embraced the touchscreen and made the functions more usable and the fact that you can browse cookie do directly on the screen and I'm going to be having a lot of fun with it. So I made the crumbs up and mixed them and put them in a bowl to put aside so I could do the Kievs later. I also had to make the butter so that's what I did the crumbs first so that I could do the butter after that because the um that if the butter gets a little bit of the crumbs in it, it wasn't a big deal. But the other way around would, meant that the crumbs wouldn't have ground up quite as well. So I used ghee like I did last time. I seasoned this a little bit heavier than the last batch. I feel like it needed a little bit more. So we added that bacon to the chicken mince to add a little bit more to the chicken mince. And I added a little bit more salt in that as well. Um, and then I added a little bit more garlic and a little bit more of everything into this butter mix so I used fresh parsley from the garden again I used some dried thyme and I used my smoked garlic paste and I probably did double or triple the amount of the smoked garlic paste than I did last time and I blended it all up and emulsified it uh, so that I could use it inside the Kievs so I just mixed it scraped it down mixed it until it was right the frozen uh, smoked garlic paste sent the ghee solid as well so it was a little hard to get it to mix through evenly but it doesn't really need to be that even to be honest it's it's an, a butter emulsion that's going in the middle of a Kiev so it's not like it really makes that much of a difference 
once it was all emulsified I used some waxed paper to roll it out so you want it in a shape that suits the shape of the Kievs that you're going to do I'm going to do my Kievs in a bit of an oval a bit like the ones that you buy at Woolworths or Coles um, so I made it into like a elongated rectangle and I wanted to be able to slice chunks of it off and they would be the right sort of size to just place into the Kiev so that I could mold the chicken around them so I just used the wax paper to shape it and kept on making it spread it out and make it as even as possible so that it would work for inside the Kievs. I just kept turning it and making pressure on it until it got to the right consistency or well I wanted to use the whole of the the paper and I made two of these with the butter that I made so I just made them I just kept on rolling it and shaping it till it was the right shape and size for what I wanted it for and then I stuck them in the freezer so that they could harden up before I filled the Kievs with them. While they were in the freezer I made one of my favorite dishes that I haven't made in a really long time because I haven't been using the cook function on my Thermomix. So this is Quirky Cooking's apple berry custard crumble. I didn't put any berries in this one I just used my apples but what you do is you make the custard in the Thermomix. Now custard is such a simple thing and it is easy to make on a stovetop you just have to stand there with it. Uh, you can't you, can strain it if you make any errors when you make it on the stovetop too and that fixes most of it and things like that like it is a simple thing to make but it does require time to stand there and get it right uh, and if it fails it fails spectacularly <laughs> like having scrambled eggs in your custard is never nice so one of the things that I really missed about having a thermomix was making custard such a simple thing it's a bit like the the measuring cup on top it is a really simple thing but uh, in to make custard in the thermomix all you do is you throw all the egg custard ingredients into the bowl and turn it on so this has a couple of eggs some coconut cream a little bit of sugar a little bit of corn flour and um I don't know that's I'll have to have a check but all the basic ingredients of a custard and then you throw it all in the bowl at once you some vanilla I think went in it as well and when it's all in the bowl you put the lid on and you set it on to 90 degrees for six minutes or more it depends on the quantity of custard that you're doing and the recipes vary for that reason uh, and you let it go and it will whisk it and cook it at the same time and it will come out with perfect custard. I had this plugged into a power meter as well to have a look at what sort of power it was drawing while I was using it uh, and I'm going to keep on monitoring that out of curiosity. And it does seem to pull the full thousand watts for heating but only intermittently. It doesn't seem to hold the thousand watts for very long so it, and once it hit temperature it definitely didn't hit hold the wattage and it didn't even go up to a thousand watts so once it hit the 90 degrees uh, it occasionally flared up to about 400 watts to just maintain that temperature but the rest of the time sat at just the 100 watts which is probably just the motor running the uh, blades for whisking it so I was quite quite happy with that that it didn't require that constant thousand watts at all times while the temperature was on so I'm going to keep assessing how it works with the wattage and things like that but that was quite a nice thing to see that it didn't require that high wattage at all times it makes me more comfortable with using it for cooking though I was always going to do it that's why the secondary solar array was there and I would never have bought it if I couldn't use it for cooking as well but I'm glad that it seems to work quite well in that sense now obviously I need to figure out my filming angles a bit better for this too because it's focusing on the rubbish behind the thermix not the thermix and it's quite dull at the thermix because the screen's so bright so I will work on that but <laughs> for the moment this was just it was too exciting to fiddle with camera angles and things like that so once it's done it comes you take it straight off so it rings its little chime to tell you it's done and you pull the bowl off and you have perfect thick custard warm custard now this can be poured on anything you desire like you can have it with puddings or anything else it's it's just edible straight away this nice thick custard you can refrigerate it too with a like uh, with uh, some cling wrap over it to stop it creating a skin and you've got cold custard dessert type thing as well but um, for this dish this quirky cooking dish what she does is she puts all the fruit in the bottom of the tray uh, you can use 
like fresh cut fruit or whatever but we have all these canned apples that we need to use so I used a couple of jars of my stewed apples in the bottom here you can add berries or anything you want to it as well but we just did straight apple because I have all this apple to use so I filled the baking tray with the apple and then spread it out and then you pour the custard over the top so you just pour the custard and spread it over the top to create a layer of custard on top of the apple uh, which is gives that moisture to it as well um, and custard's good with everything and it stays warm so once the custard is spread all over the top you then uh, do your crumble mix so you don't need to wash the bowl after making the custard and making the crumble again it's a bit like the crumb if I did it the other way around it would be an issue but by doing the custard first it means that you can do the crumble straight in the bowl and the crumble is very standard it's oats nuts a bit of flour a little bit of sugar and some fat of some sort I used a mix of olive oil and ghee in this one and you just put it all in the thermomix and you just mix it for a couple of seconds and it will break up the nuts a little bit and uh, blend the crumble ingredients for you so you just throw it all in and get the get it all mixed up together so that you can spread it out on top and once it's done you pull it off the thermomix and spread it out on top of your custard so nice and simple straight on top of the custard and then it goes into the barbecue for me or the oven for anyone else so we just stick it straight in the barbecue spread those cr the crumb out as much as possible over the top uh depending on how much liquid you left in the bottom depends on and which oil and butter and stuff that you use whether you chill your butter whether it was room temperature mine ended up a little bit like a dough because I didn't chill anything but that's fine I'm just going to spread it out anyway and that custard layer underneath means that you're not going to get those crispy bits of apple because the custard protects the apple as well so I spread that crumble out on top and then stuck it in the barbecue After I did that, Sonnet and I did the rest of the Kievs. So I had these two trays worth of breasts. So it ended up being like four and a half odd kilos of mince uh, that I had minced up yesterday. And all I did was I weighed out 100 grams of the mince. If you, I've got a little bowl of water there, so I'm dampening my hands as I'm working with the mince, which stops it sticking. Uh, and then I measured out about 100 grams of the chicken mince, placed a chunk of the butter in the middle, and then grabbed another 50 grams of mince to put over the top and then created a bit of a seal around it. I found that that was the easiest rather than like starting with 150 grams. I'd end up with little bits of thin uh, mince around where the butter was and stuff it was much easier to have the 100 grams to start with put the butter in it and then put the 50 grams on top and create sort of a a seal at the edges there I definitely found that that was an easier way to do it so if you're if you were struggling with getting a good coating around your butter mix this is definitely the way that I would suggest doing it it worked really well so once I shaped them and got them even and then I handed them to Sonnet and Sonnet covered them with the crumb mix and then placed them on the tray. We did run out of the almond mix and my thermomix bowl was dirty and moisture and making crumbs is never a good idea so I went hunting through the fridge afterwards and I did find a whole bunch of sourdough breadcrumbs that I had seasoned and put there obviously for something else so I managed to find that bag in the fridge and we did some in that as well. So all up after we got them all done, I ended up with 34 of the Kievs out of the four and a half odd kilos of mints. So we had them all on trays. We had some for dinner, but I put all the trays in the freezer to flash freeze. And then the next day I will put them into Ziploc bags in the freezer so that they can be pulled out to be cooked from frozen at any point in time. And this is what the custard crumble looks like afterwards as well. So they had Kievs with mashed potato and veg for dinner and then crumble for dessert. And the other half of the crumble they had the next morning and everyone really enjoyed it. So thank you very much for coming along with me today on my exciting day. Maybe not exciting for everyone, but exciting for me. And I will see you again tomorrow. I think tomorrow's video will be the quarter of a cow uh, that is arriving and i will share that with you so you can see what you get for a quarter of a cow and then we'll see what happens after that thanks guys